Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at the new ROG Ryujin 2 360mm AIO. They will be doing a 240mm version as well if you're a little bit more tight on space. We're going to be doing some thermal testing but I do need to bring up that it kind of does have a pretty big flaw that I've brought up with Asus coolers in the past and sadly still not been rectified. So we'll have a look inside the box and this is the first time I'm looking inside the box. Uh, so it's new to me as it would be to you when you've just bought it. Uh, it opens like a motherboard box and normally the uh, AIOs don't. You get a Welcome to the Republic uh, greeting card, I suppose you could call it. Okay, so we've got fans there. So I'm looking pump, radiator, not sure what's underneath that bit. So we'll start here. Just a normal box. It actually feels quite heavy and dense, if that makes any sense. And this is our hub the fans and the RGB. Now I'm going to assume that this might go into the uh, little node port on the board but we'll have to have a look and around here we've got RGBs, so three pin addressable RGBs, that says fan four, it says <laughs> three fans outside and one RGB and then three RGBs, oh, right okay, bit of a mix, why don't they put them all on the same side? Anyway, SATA, Oh, another RGB. Oh, that's the RGB in and the SATA in. So that's somewhere that you're going to have to think about putting somewhere nice and tidy. Now we know because it's on the box about the Noctua fans. Oh, how weird is that? Look, it's actually resealable little bags like you put sandwiches in. Okay, so here are the Noctua fans. They actually look really nice when you spin them in that light. Anyway, so we know there are three of those fans. So we'll pull the main AIO out and see if we've got anything else. Okay, so, oh, manuals, then your fitting kit. I believe that might be a splitter. It is. So we get a one PWM into three PWMs. I actually use a lot of these, but I buy braided ones. I'll just get them off of eBay or Amazon. Then there is an extension cable for your addressable RGB. There are 3M stickers. That must be to stick the uh, RGB hub thing somewhere on like the back of your case or something. And then the rest of it is just fittings. That's just fans. And I can't, I don't think there's anything else in there. So we will now bust it all away so that we can have a look at the pump and everything itself. All of the bags are branded ROG by the way. It actually came in a plastic bag like you get from the supermarket with ROG on it as well but I don't know if that was just what they sent it to me in. Now round base, very Acetec familiar kind of base. Lots of ROG branding, as you would expect. I don't know whether this has got a fan built into it like the old one yet. I'm going to have to have a look and find out. But we know the main event for this is going to be this massive screen, which I will show you, uh, obviously lit up and what you can put on it. But the radiator's branded ROG as well, which I think is a nice touch. It kind of makes it when so, so many of the AIOs are so similar, something to make it kind of stand out from the crowd is rather nice. So that's our initial box opening. So we've had a good look in the box and we now have the cooler fitted. Obviously it's 360 millimeters, so you're gonna need a fairly big case. Uh, some of the larger cases out there, you'll be able to get it in the roof like this and then you may uh, have them in the front, but then you're gonna have to think about whether you wanna run a push or a pull configuration. For the most part, it's not going to make an enormous amount of difference to you. The screen on the front is lovely, and uh, in the software, you can actually add and upload your own GIFs. So you can download them, and it, if it's not quite the right resolution for it, the software will change it for you as well. 
which is a nice touch because it means you can be uh, silly and childish like me and put all sorts of things on the front. You can also link it to the time and hardware monitor. Now with hardware monitor, you can then, if you'd like, put the CPU temperature up. But this is where we come into a slight problem because the CPU temperature is actually a temperature probe on the back of the board. It's the socket temp. It doesn't actually take a reading from the CPU itself. Now this does sound really strange, but I have asked Asus about this in the past and had it confirmed. I'm pretty sure when it comes to uh, vendors, like other vendors, like other brands, that they use the socket temp as well. Now, what you do need to do when you, uh, now you know this, is you will need to offset your expectations. Because the thing is, is it's going to look like your CPU is running really cool and you're going to be telling all your friends, oh, you know, mine doesn't ever get that hot. I've got that Asus cooler. And that's because it's not actually the CPU temp that it's showing you, it's the socket temp. Now what this can mean if you're running benchmarks or do some very intensive testing is there is a bit of a delay between the um, thermal sensor on the board or in the socket warming up and then the, pr the board, sorry, the cooler itself then starting to spin the fans up. And what that does mean is initially you'll get a surge in temperatures before the fans actually decide to kick in and then your temperatures will drop back down again. For somebody like me though, that does testing and we have to take a maximum temperature that initial burst at the beginning before the fans kick in pretty much means that with most of my tests it fails. Um, now with gaming and stuff at home you're not going to have too much of a problem because games aren't necessarily massively CPU intensive enough but when you use Prime or Blender or a video editor there's going to be a 20 second bit at the beginning where your processor is likely to be running 10 or 15 degrees hotter than it would have been if the fans had been slightly more responsive at the beginning. Um, so that is something that you're going to have to keep in mind. It also means that if you create a custom fan curve, you're going to need to think to yourself, you know, oh, I'd normally ramp my fans up at, let's say, 60 degrees. If the socket temperature gets to 60 degrees and your actual CPU temperature is likely to be 15, maybe 20 degrees more. So you need to kind of offset everything back. It's something that I would personally say to you at home to have a play with because you can work around it, but only if you're aware of it. It's the only brand that does it this way and it is really frustrating because the cooler itself is really well made. The fans are lovely. I mean, we've got Noctua 2000 RPM fans on this. They're really high premium fans. You can set them so that they run so quietly but you just need to be aware that, you know, oh, I'm before I had my cooler, I knew my uh, temps were, let's say, 70 degrees on full load, and all of a sudden I'm not even breaking 60 anymore. It's amazing, but there's a reason because of it. So as long as you're aware of that, you're not going to have too much of a problem. Problem is, for a benchmarker or anyone doing anything intensive, you're probably going to want to maybe stick a manual uh, set fan speed on it or you know hit them to turn on first if you're definitely overclocking and benchmarking and that sort of thing I just put them on a hundred percent and just have done with it but it is a shame because the software has got significantly better the um, the actual UI and all of that sort of stuff is actually really nice as well I did really enjoy it the fact that the gifs didn't have to be an exact size and the software does it all for you it all is really nice and it's just kind of hampered by that why is a CPU cooler taking the temperature from behind the, it's essentially a motherboard probe, it's behind the socket, or at least that, it was when I asked them about it last time. Trying to get responses out of them this time has been a little bit slow in that they were asking me for overclocking, temp, overclocking settings and stuff and I was like, let's just focus on the fact that it's a board temp and not actually taken from the CPU itself. But <clears throat> anyway, we'll move on. Really nice cooler. You just need to make sure that you uh, are aware of it. I'll put the, temp the, the probes up. So effectively, I've had to change it in. I couldn't run the Asus profiles where you have like standard and then turbo and silent because they all failed because the fans didn't respond fast enough 
and always got too hot too quickly. Now we normally have an 80 degree cutoff, um, but we've kind of had to put some of the failed data in the graph because, yeah, anyway. So the data's there for you. I ended up having to test it with uh, full speed, 1500 RPM, and then we went for 1000 RPM static as well. If you do want to tune and use it at home, there are, you know, if you spend a bit of time doing it based on what you would normally use it for. So if you're using Blender, do some Blender runs with it. If you're a video editor, do that. Gaming, I would probably just stick it on standard and not particularly worry about it um, because, you know, gaming's not necessarily crazy CPU intensive enough to trip this up. And I think that's probably where they're going from with it because in their defense, uh, what it does do is it gives you a, uh, a nice user experience where you don't hear the fans ramping up too quickly. You, you, you just get a little bit more heat at the beginning and then it settles down. So it, it does level itself out. So I can, you know, that I, I'm giving them some ex passes, you know, a, an excuse for it. It's just so very different to what uh, the other manufacturers do. The screen I really like. The only thing I don't like is the uh, fan that's built into it. If I'm completely honest, if you're if you need a cooler this big, then I would suggest that you probably don't. You probably already own a motherboard that doesn't necessarily need that cooler, which is going to be then blowing out towards the VRMs, um, because m most of the aftermarket, you know, like expensive boards which would suit with this aren't necessarily going to need any extra cooling and it is horrifically loud one if you want to make any difference to vrm temps then that little fan does pretty much need to be blowing an absolute hooli as in blowing really fast which means very loud for it to make any sense whatsoever so for the most part for everybody at home i would say fix it on relatively low if you need it or just turn it off because that's what I would do. I'd just turn it off and then tune these fans. Uh, maybe it's there to keep the screen cool, but it doesn't particularly feel like it ever gets hot. So, uh, a, a complicated one with this one, and it's probably one that um, uh, they're not going to necessarily appreciate me bringing up because I, I do feel very confused by it. It is a strange one. Um, now, aesthetics wise, and because of the fact, like the actual design and everything of it, the, 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 the mechanical side of it, I love it, but it's that little, that single thing kind of trips it up, which makes me a bit uncomfortable. And it's, I would personally say that Asus can do significantly better than this. It's a small change. They just need to add something in the software to uh, auto temperature probe or CPU packet temperature, or maybe you could pick your, the core that you know is always the hottest on the board or <clears throat> an average CPU temperature. So let's, you know, if you have a four core or a six, it just averages out all of the cores and then runs from that. I think if they added that, this would probably be one of the best coolers on the planet. Whereas at the moment, it's just being held back a little bit by something which I personally think is rather silly. But anyway, beautiful cooler, very well made cooler, great software, just that one probe that was the problem. But for now, at least, this is the tiniest one with another video for you, out. Love you, sis.